Hello, everyone, and welcome to the week ahead with Michelle. We have a really important week, and I've been thinking about this week as being kind of a reflection of um, the upper limit problem of humanity. Like, you know, I've heard that term spoken to in terms of when people are trying to elevate themselves in their success and um, they reach kind of the limit of where they can't, uh, they can't go beyond where they've been before. And yet that reaching of limitations, evolutionary challenges, right? Within our own being, within our own lives, within the structures of our life, within the relationships and our sense of sovereignty and connection to those relationships um, where we would just can't meet one another, we are hitting an upper limit problem. And you can see where that upper limit is, right? The limitation of Saturn in Aquarius. That is the limitation of our thinking. And we already have Mercury who's moved into Pisces um, Venus has already passed through her conjunction to Jupiter and Chiron, and she's on the other side of that in Aries. Um, Pluto is creeping in these last minutes of the 29th degree of Capricorn, right? We're not at the end, folks, right? We're at the upper limit problem. We're at the reaching that threshold of our evolutionary challenge. And at the same time, Mars is working on clearing its shadow, right? Mars is in this um, 21st degree. We're gonna be clearing into new territory as this month progresses. And that means that all the limitations that we have faced within ourselves, outside of ourselves, especially as Saturn enters into Pisces, have to be dissolved. And Pisces is that um, dissolving into the surrender, the faith. I've been thinking a lot about faith and what, what challenges us to have faith in things that are unseen, right? Think when we keep, um, let's say we, we've, wanted a relationship to move to a certain place and it never has and it hasn't because the limitations of the people right the blocks to the heart the blocks to our awareness the blocks that we have to giving ourselves fully to something meets us at that upper limit level where we just can't do the thing right we can't bring ourselves to do the thing even if it is somehow linked to something that we might desire, even if it is somehow going to force us into a, a situation which would bring about change, bring about even the resolution or the healing or the ultimate um, closure of a cycle, we're going to hit that upper limit problem until it's met from within. Right? And the meeting from within is meeting all the blocks, the barriers, the judgments, Saturn fear, Saturn constriction, restrictions, limitations that have led us to believe, oh, this isn't possible for me. This isn't going to happen. Where all of our doubt or despair, right, the disbelief in the sacred other finally really showing up for us, all that doubt masking the limitation of our ability to receive that love, right? So once we face the upper limit problem in ourselves, and this week I think is the challenge of where that meets our deepest core wound, the sense of our self and our desire, right? Mars is our drive and our desire. And it's also the masculine principle ruling all of that Jupiter, Vesta, Chiron, Venus, Juno, everything that we're committed to, devoted to, that which wants to expand and grow, the medicine of our own healing, our sense of self-love and self-worth and self-value, everything challenged to the limit of where our mind has allowed us to go.
right? What, what we can have. If I have never known what it's like to have siblings, I can't envision what sibling relationships would be like. If I have never known what it's like to be fully loved and embraced by a beloved partner, I can't necessarily envision how my life is gonna be like. I might desire those things and even want to be working towards them in my life or manifesting them, right? But on some level, I'm gonna be limited by my lack of experience or my hurt or my wounds or my judgments or my fear or the conditioning that I receive that says, this is how that works. This is how you grow up. This is how you operate as an adult. This is how you raise children. This is how you do the work. This is how you do that, right? And all that messaging that we receive when it's not actually the truth of what what the divine picture is, right? right? What the unconditionally loving perspective of our life is, all inclusive, all accepting of our soul and the soul journey and the path that we are called to walk as individuals and as um, beings that share a life together, right? Then we have to reach those places where we're forced to face the upper limit. And in this case, this week is a real um, sort of reckoning time where the core of our wounds and the core of our conditioning and the roots of our fears can really be shown in the light of the full moon. The Virgo moon is a purification moon. They call it the worm moon. And it's a deep wound, you know, if you've been out of balance in, in a sense of um, chaos or disharmony, if there's been physical or spiritual challenges, right? All challenges on some level when they, when they manifest as physical are just roots of spiritual problems that we, we have this full moon really polarizing the core archetypes of the victim and the perpetrator, the martyr and the forgiver, right? We have the, that which is in service to the divine and the divine. That's our truest relationship, instruments of the divine, right? Vessels, you could be a violin, you could be a flute, you could be any instrument and the divine is using you, whether you're a paintbrush, whether you're a typewriter or a computer or an iPhone, whatever type of vessel for the divine you are, whether you're a pot or a cat, you know, everything is a communication device. Whether you're a poet or a singer or a, an artist, whatever expression you choose to take with your instrument, your body is the instrument. Mercury is attuning to the body. You know, when Mercury entered Pisces, all of a sudden I was like, came over with a wave, this kind of overnight illness that brought in fever and chills and full body aches and like exhaustion and depletion and upset stomach, and everything like, and I feel like I'm just on the repair end of that cycle, but it brought me down into what it feels like to be unwell to go from wellness to illness and how the journey back to wellness is often slower. We might suddenly lose the connection to wellness and then it takes a while for our body and our mind to come back into a state of wellness. And if we've been in a state of illness, if we've had maybe a sudden or even a shocking injury or loss, if we've had states of grief, if we become sick, all of a sudden you're aware of the limitations, Saturn, of the fears, of the challenges, of the pain, of the suffering, of the struggle. And it made me really aware of people in my community who are 
really vulnerable to illness, people in my community who are really struggling with pain in their body. I spent the whole night like in pain, feeling and praying for a dear friend of mine who spends so much time of her own body healing from the pain of an accident and really feeling like I could know on the inside what it's like for her to be with that pain because of having this, um, you know, momentary experience. I'm not left with the same repair that she's ultimately facing in her life, but I am facing the, the empathy, the compassion, the sympathy, the clear understanding, right? And Saturn is going to be moving into Pisces, shifting our dynamic to illness, immunity, wellness, to healing, to compassion, to faith, to trust. We can't trust based on the mind alone. If we only believed in miracles based on our ability to see them, then we wouldn't believe in them at all because many of the miracles that are happening all the time defy time and space. They defy the presence of a witness. There's a scientific study that says like that which is being watched or that which is being observed changes in relationship to the observer. Now think about that. If you become the observer of your own life and you witness maybe the upper limit problem of your own heart, your own mind, your own callings, your longings, the parts of your souls that are really asking for real growth, real truth, real change to happen. And yet those parts of yourself that are also limited to the experience that you can't force yourself to be somewhere that you're not. You can't make something become something that it's not. It has to do its own path of transformation. And at the same time, you can't doubt your way into certainty. You have to become in certainty to that doubt, right? The faith that gets cultivated from our standing in that certainty. There's a story of a woman who was bleeding, who came to Jesus in a crowd and she touched his garment. And I heard this story twice and then from that thought, okay, I've got to really attune to where, where is this pointing to me? Something that's important. She touched Jesus' garment and it said that the power flowed out of him. And he said, who touched me? Because he felt the exchange of energy, but he hadn't consented to healing someone. He hadn't, you know, clearly gone to the person and touched them. And when he looked at her and she admitted, yes, I, I believe that if I could just touch a thread of your garment, I would be healed of this, this bleeding that has kept me alone alienated, cast out from my community. That's all Saturn in Aquarius, right? What has COVID done? Left people with sense of aloneness and isolation that we haven't fully repaired from psychologically, emotionally, physically, financially, all of these realms are still up for transformation. And yet we're trying to emerge, but we're hitting the upper limit problem of where our reality is not congruent with our desires. And he said, it is because of your faith that healed you. He's not saying it was my power because he didn't give his power consensually to her. He, he's saying it was her power, the power of her mind to con continue to stay in that place of belief, even despite that not having what she desired, right? She didn't have access to Jesus. She had to push through all of the obstacles of the crowd of people who all felt that they could not touch her. So then Saturn enters Aquarius, right? And what do we have? A new two and a half year cycle relative to Pisces the last sign of the zodiac, culminating, culminating cycles that have been in existence for 
I would say 248 years also. I was going to look back and see when was the last time Saturn was in Pisces and Pluto was in Aquarius. That would be a really fascinating study. If anyone knows, we can put it in the comments. Um, and I'll certainly do the research. But we have a new entrance happening where both Saturn and Pluto are entering new signs this month. This is big from our cycle perspective. And this full moon marks the culmination of what has, you know, so many people have come to me and said that, you know, relationships have ended and parts of their life are ending and things, things are changing and things are dissolving. I just had, you know, the pastor of our church come and say, and she's done. And it really is like shocked me to my core because she was the very person who brought me here to where I am. And as, the, as deeply as I desire to leave and move on, I hadn't seen any acknowledgments that, that, that the time was coming, that the end was coming. And I sense that it is, but I don't know where yet, you know, where we don't know where we're going, what we're doing. And maybe there is movements right in between miracles linking us to new thoughts and in between the moments of actually attending to our healing and to our growth and facing the limits of our wounds, the limits of the challenges that where we have to face that woundedness in order to heal. We have to face that, that fear or those places that are unforgiven or unresolved, those questions that don't have answers where doubts still arise in our mind. Will I get this, that, I, that which I desire? Will I get to have this experience in this lifetime? Will I get to be you know, in a beloved relationship? Will I get to have a child? Will I get to get this career or this job that I really desire? Will I get to do this thing? Will I get to heal from this disease, right? And like that woman whose faith healed her as she pushed through the limitations that seemed to block her from the one that could grant her what she desired, we have to really face those inner obstacles, the inner blocks, to fear, to receiving love, to courage, to making the choices, right? It's all about choice. Aries is the instinctual choice to procreate. It is the instinctual thought to begin anew. It is the instinctual birthplace of life. This month, I'm really tuning into this rebirth that we're in, and that is the theme for the um, soul evolution class series. I'm also going to be offering a special pop-up class. This is a one-off class that I will be doing this coming Friday at noon Pacific Standard Time. There is a discount for all students in my membership program. So if you're an evolution student member or a soul apprentice member, you get an automatic discount um, of, the, of the amount of your monthly membership to join that class. And we're gonna be tuning into the mastery of Chiron, what it means to own our wounds, to really claim our healing and to become the master of our healing journey. This is such a necessity in order for us to reach that upper limit and grow, right? In order for us to convert from the wounded person to the healer, to the teacher, to the medicine maker, to the gift giver, to the blesser of humanity. And for us to grow, we have to claim the places where those wounds exist. So I'm gonna be going through Chiron in the chart, offering a transmission on the Chiron-Jupiter conjunction and a deep dive into the Chiron archetype. You are absolutely invited to join me. This will be a healing transmission. If you can't make it live for the class, your registration will still give you access to the recording of this master class. And I'm gonna be doing this during the Libra moon cycle, which is a part of the closing of this cycle, right? Libra is such a tenuous area right now. It's getting the opposition from all of this Jupiter, Chiron, Vesta, Juno, 
uh, Venus energy. And it's going to be the place of entry for the South Node, right? It is going to be the resolution point in the future of this nodal square where we're going to be working out how do we heal these relationships? How do we heal the patterns from the family, from the past, from our communication, the way we want to love versus the way we do show up and love, the way we want to live versus the way we do show up and live and releasing fears and insecurities and facing attachments and beliefs and expectations and all of that like the underlying beginning of that work comes through Chiron, really honing on what is the wound in our chart? Where is the healing journey beginning? And so as we come together for that, I hope that you'll choose to join me for this special conjunction. You know, these are tender days as we're in this period of transition. It requires a lot, you know, like when you're ill, all of a sudden, it shuts down life, right? It dampens the system and we go into an incubation of what the body needs in order to restore wellness. Well, we have a civilization that has been unwell for a long time. These are not like surface level issues. These are Pluto level issues, right? So this isn't even our generation that we're talking about. This is multi-ancestral remnants of oppression, depression, slavery, racism, you know, injustice of all kinds, where, where, where we're facing the alienation and the difficulties of being human beings that have not learned how to love one another, how to live with one another in harmony, where war has destructed the matriarchal safety of the feminine of raising children where capitalism has destroyed the capacity for families to raise children in villages with healthy family immune system, community immune system, where land prices has pushed people to the edges of homelessness and desperation and where it Illness and sickness is being treated by a culture that commoditizes medicine for its own profit, right? None of this can really sustain itself and thus it has to kind of implode and we're the implosition <laughs> generation, right? We are the generation that came here to go through the cocoon. And in each and every one of our own lives, we're being catalyzed in what we are committed to, what we are willing to face, to choose with our own courage, to take, you know, as my one of my beloved friends and teachers, Shiloh Sophia says, to take our piece of the red thread knowing that we're all connected. We are all connected to the umbilical cord of cosmos, of consciousness, of life itself. There's blood running through each one of our human bodies. None of us, neither sinner nor saint, is immune from the blood running through our bodies. So in that way, we're all connected to the red thread and we each have a part to play in the evolution of humanity. And if we claim our little part, our little wounds, our big hearts, and our full selves ready to come whole and holy to what it is that is being initiated now in our own sacred journey, then we can go and move places and move mountains in ways we haven't ever before. So I meet you on this path. I thank you so much for being with me this week. If you wanna join me for that Friday class, there's a link in the description to register for class. And I, you know, I pray that this be a healing week for you, that this be a week where you face that which is inside and find a new commitment and a new ground to your own healing, to the possibility of releasing the past and stepping into a new way, a new way and a journey with faith that develops beyond your doubts, beyond what is uncertain, beyond, but that your faith moves the healing within you that you need and desire and claim for yourself now. So with that, may you be well, may all be well. 
leave me your comments as always. I love to hear your voice and thank you so much for being with me on this sacred journey. Bye for now, friends.